I was thinking that oh, Vijay is not here, all his friends are here. <laughs> and also, I am feeling for my daughter and your brother, elder. <coughs> he is doing well, perhaps. Very good. Now, we should begin our classes. Mm. My uh, book for my Guru Dev, I get to translate Prem Prayozan and he is doing mm. He will tell something. You are telling so beautiful mm -hmm. and okay. And he should again something. <coughs> Again, Bhati Bhat. The book of Param Guru is there. So many things you are speaking, you should speak more. And then others will be speak. That how he was born. Especially, he was Guru Nishtha. What is the meaning of Guru Nishtha? Taking his life in his hands to do anything for his Guru because his Guru Dev was so Dhanasaya. So his life and soul wanted to offer for his Guru Dev. So this should be like this. Nowadays, bogus persons fallen persons, knowing nothing, oh, they are calling for Hrithi, to be Hrithi. You should always be very careful for all. Bogus Hrithis. Hrithis has no part failure in Krishna consciousness. All who are rejected, characterless persons, and they cannot help anyone, they want to be Riti or um, they want to be Guru again, but in this guise, in the name of Riti. So you should be careful. My book is given here, you should try to give some here. Hmm? If they need it, without any, any price, you should try to display. You should keep with some with Rishikesh Maharaj has bought one box, sixty copies. Mm. He bought this morning, so he ah. has one box. Yes, yes. Everyone in is Malaysia and here also. 
they are deadly against this rhythmic system, bogus system. In our line, Guru Parampara, there is no rhythmic system anywhere. You can speak something. You should try to hear very patiently and try to observe all these teachings to be a very bona fide disciple. You should come on. What are you doing there? What you are doing there? Oh, you should come. In front, always. Otherwise, I will kiss your ears. Always in front of me. If you want to learn something, never sit behind. And if you want to sleep, oh, you can be there. No. Also, the example is 
the time is there when after the disappearance of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sasri Thakur, the Guru Srila Prabhupada, then some of his foremost disciples, apparently very elevated and leading disciples, such as Sundarananda Vidyavinod and Ananta Vasudev and others, they gave up the uh, philosophy, they gave up the line of, of Srila Prabhupada and accepted another philosophy. And having turned against their spiritual master, others were also going and joining them. So at one point, Srila Bhakti Pragyam Keshavaj, his own brother, also followed in the footsteps of Sundarananda Vidyavinod and others. So at that time, Srila Bhakti Pragyam Maharaj, he refused to ever see the face of his brother again. He said, from the material consideration, he may be my brother, but because he has gone against my Gurudev, then I never want to see his face ever again. So he had such nishta in the lotus feet of his Guru, even such a close relative, he could easily reject them for going against his Guru Padma. So, Srila Bhakti Pragyam Keshe Maharaj was very, very strong, yet at the same time, he was also very soft and loving in his dealings with all of the devotees. Once Srila Bhakti Pragyam Keshe Maharaj, he came to Keshe Ji Gaudiyamaj, and he was in his Bhajan Kutia and chanting Harinam, and at that time, Bhagavad Gita, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Maharaj, he had been reading the um, Sri Gopal Champu of Srila Jiva Goswami. And he had just read the uh, section dealing with Dham, Dhamadhar Bandhan Lila, the pastime of Yashodamaya binding Krishna around the waist with rope. So upon reading the explanation of Srila Jiva Goswami, then Srila Gurudev, he was very, very inspired. And being unable to check himself, taking the book under his arm, he immediately went into the Bhajan Kutir of Param Gurudev and uh, spontaneously began to glorify Srila Jiva Goswami. Hmm? Oh Gurudev, I have read here Gopal Shampu Srila Jiva Goswami, he said. And here we find that although Srila Jiva Goswami is so famous for being a great philosopher, he is also a very Rasik Vaishnav, as can be seen from his uh, conception and explanation of the pastime of Krishna being bound by Madhya Shoda. So then uh, Srila Gurudev, he went on to read uh, this pastime from Gopal Champu, how when after Krishna had pulled down the two Yamal Arjuna trees, then they fell down with a very, very uh, powerful, loud, thundering sound. And from all over branch, everyone heard this. And all the bridge buses in great anxiety, they came running to that spot. Mother Yashoda, she came running there and seeing Krishna, how she tied him. And because of this, now this terrible accident had happened, she became stunned and she was unable to move, she was unable to speak. And Nanda Baba, he came there and he saw Krishna and he, he was so grateful that Krishna had been saved from such a great calamity. He put, picked up Krishna, put him in his lap, and he was caressing the limbs of his body to see if he was okay, and smelling his head. And then he asked Krishna, Oh, my son, who has done this to you? Who has tied you in this way? And Krishna, he didn't want to say. He didn't want to say. But Nanda Baba, he insisted again and again, Who has tied you? Who has tied you? So then, reluctantly, Krishna, he whispered into the ear of his father, Oh, Maya. Madhya Shoda, she has bound me. When Nanda Baba heard this, he became very, very grave and he did not speak. So he, he undid the knot and taking Krishna in, in his, uh, on his shoulder and Baladev, then he returned home. And at this time, Nanda Baba, he was quite angry. He did not want to speak uh, with Yashoda. And Yashoda Maya, she was also uh, afraid to go near him because he was so angry. And Krishna also, he would not go to be with his mother, but rather he spent the whole day with Nanda Baba. Nanda Baba took him to his uh, 
council. He took him to the cow shed, and then Nanda Baba was milking the cows, directly milking the udder, so that the milk was squirting directly into Krishna's mouth and Balde's mouth and feeding them misery, and in this way satisfying them so much. And then the e when the evening time came and he still hadn't spoken with y Yashoda and also Krishna had also not gone to his mother, then at that time Ro Rohini Maya, she came uh, to Nanda Baba and told him of the situation. She had described how, oh, now Madhi Yashoda is sitting in the inner chamber of the house, in the ladies' chamber, and she's sitting still, she's not talking, she hasn't eaten anything, she hasn't taken anything to drink the whole day, she's just sitting, uh, and her heart is broken. And all of the elderly gopis in the house, they're all sitting her, around her, and they're all feeling so sad. Mm? They're all crying, and they, also they haven't eaten, they haven't drunk anything the whole day. So then Nanda Baba said, yes, this is the fruit of anger. Mm? And one should learn the lesson that this is the fruit of anger. anger. Mm? Why, why was she so cruel to bind Krishna? Then Rohini, she became very upset. She said, oh, you should not use the word cruel in relationship to Yashoda because she is inside and outside. She is always so soft. She is always so soft. And then the uh, wife of uh, Upananda, she came there and, and she said uh, to Krishna, you should come and see your mother. And Krishna said, I will not go to my mother. And then she began to laugh, saying, Oh yes, you will not go to your mother? Then who, how will you breastfeed? How will you get milk? Krishna said, No need. Baba will feed me milk directly from the udder of the cow and give him misery also. I said, And who will you play with? Oh, I will play with uh, Baba and with um, Daubaya, with Baldev. Uh, like this. So then... <coughs> Uh, Rohini, she was uh, crying so much and Nanda Baba, he said, why won't you go to Rohini? Rohini, and then Krishna, he said, I will not go to her because when my mother bound me and I was calling, oh please help me, please help me, then at that time she was also there and she did not come. So then Rohini, she sent Baldev. Well, then you should go and you bring Krishna to come to his mother. So then Baldev, he came there and he tried to get Krishna, to grab hold of Krishna and bring Krishna to his mother, but he, he would not go. And ordinarily Baldev is so strong and he can defeat Krishna. But this time Krishna just with a jolt he threw Baldev and he fell flat on the ground. And Baldev was astonished. So then the in the, here in Gopal Temple, Jiva Goswami describes how Nanda Baba, he, he's saying to Krishna, Oh, should I give, should I beat your mother? You won't go to your mother, should I beat her for what she's done? But then Krishna is really, his, his heart is expressed here because he doesn't want this. And then he, with both hands, he takes hold of the hands of Nanda Baba and said, No, no, you should not do. And then Nanda Baba, he began to feel in his heart, that he knew that Yashoda, her love for Krishna was so pure. And because of separation from Krishna, now she must be feeling so much pain. So then Nanda Baba, he said, you know, if you do not go, then she may, and only six days with his hand like this, that she may leave her life, may leave her body like this. And then when Krishna heard this, then automatically of his own accord, he reached out towards uh, Rohini Maya and in the direction of his mother he wanted to go there of his own accord independently like this so then he began to move to, towards the direction of his mother and Rohini Maya she quickly she picked him up and carried him and placed him in the lap of Madhya Yashoda and then when Madhya Yashoda was re reunited with Krishna then she began crying and wailing very loudly like a Kurari bird mm? so in, in the inner court of the house Madhya Yashoda was crying and Krishna was crying, and all the elderly gopis are also crying. And in the outer portion of the house, Nanda Baba, he was there, and he was also crying. And all of Vrindavan became completely submerged in Vatsalya Bhav. Like this. So when Srila Gurudev, he was reading this 
to Param Gurudev. In Param Gurudev, he wasn't able to check himself, and he burst out crying uncontrollably, and all the astasattvika vows were manifest in his body. Mm. And at that time, Srila Gurudev has commented that he has only once or twice in his whole life seen such uh, ecstatic symptoms manifest in someone, such deep bhav, as he saw at that time when his Gurudev was remembering this wonderful pastime. So, Param Gurudev, he was also a very, uh, at the same time as being a great philosopher, he was also very rasik. We see that once at the end of Kartik, when the Kartik uh, Brat had been completed, a uh, program had been completed, many uh, of Param Gurudev's god brothers, very senior disciples, of Srila Dharaguru Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur they assembled in Keshavji Gaudiyamat Srila Bhakti Rakta Srila Maharaj Bhakti Dait Madhav Goswami Dait Madhav Goswami Maharaj Puri Maharaj Puri Maharaj Bhakti Pramod Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj Rishikesh Maharaj Rishikesh Maharaj and Jajawar Maharaj Shrauti mm. oh, Maharaj, so many prominent disciples of Prabhupada. So many great personalities were assembled there. And therefore, because so many great personalities had come together in one place, a very historic Sister Ghosti ensued. So when this Sister Ghosti began, then Shripad Rishikesh Maharaj, he stood up and very I was there serving all. <laughs> what talks are going on writing in my notebooks? Here, in my computer. Shripa <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rishikesh Maharaj, he stood up and very politely put a question to the assembled Vaishnavas. So he said that, I have had a doubt for a very long time and even though I have studied and gone through all of the Goswami Granthas uh, and commentaries of our Acharyas. And even though I have approached many of my senior godbrothers, though he was sannyasi, he was the most junior of the sannyasis there. And yet still this doubt has not been dispelled. So he explained his, the nature of his doubt. He said, in Sri Chaitanya Chajamrita, there is a verse, Jivayana Swarup Hoi. Krishnana Nitya Das, Krishnana Tatasta Shakti, Veda Veda Prakash. That the swarup or the intrinsic nature of the Jiva is that he is the Nitya Das, the eternal servant of Krishna. Krishnana Tatasta Shakti, Veda Veda Prakash. He is a manifestation, inconceivably, a manifestation of the Tatasta Shakti of Krishna, inconceivably one and different from the Supreme Lord. So, Rishikesh Maharaj, he began to explain the nature of his doubt. That is that in this verse, it is stated that it is the sarup of the jiva that he is Krishna's servant. And therefore he said, that because it's the sarup or the intrinsic nature of the jiva to be the servant of Krishna, therefore, all aspects of his eternal service, his name, his form, his appearance, they should be there in the jiva. But on the other hand, it is stated, Krishnara Tatasta Shakti Veda Veda Prakash. He is a manifestation of the Tatasta Shakti of Krishna. So although in a general sense, he may be the servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, because he is the Tatasta Shakti, it may also be said that his sarup, or the specific features of his sarup, are also Tatasta. And therefore, according to his association, he will attain a particular state of perfection in one of the primary rasas, Chantadasha, Sakya, Vatsalya, or Madhurya. So, what is actually the fact? Is it that all the features of the jiva are there in a latent position in the jiva himself? Or is it that because his Tatasta Shakti is the marginal potency, that the nature of his rule is also Tatasta? What is it? So very politely, he offered this question uh, to the Vaishnavas. Upon hearing this, 
Srila uh, Bhakti Raksha Srila Goswami Maharaj, he was the first to speak. So, Srila Srila Maharaj. All, re all requested uh, that you should answer. Mm -hmm. So, all the Vaishnavas requested Srila Bhakti Raksha Srila Goswami Maharaj to answer this question. So, Srila Srila, Srila Bhakti Raksha Srila Goswami Maharaj was very learned, a very great philosopher. So he began to give his answer. He said that according to Srila Jiva Goswami in his Sandarvas, the Jiva is called Vibhinanks Tattva. In other words, he is Vibhinanks. Vibhin means separated, and Anks means part or expansion. That the Jiva is the separated expansion, the separated part of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Lord is called Sarva Shakti Man, meaning that he has unlimited variety, he has one potency called Swarup Shakti. And that one Swarup Shakti, it performs unlimited different functions which have names according to those functions. So therefore it is said, Parasha Shakti Vividhaya Shuryate that the Absolute Truth has many varieties of pastimes. Though it is Siddhant, but Bhagavan has one Shakti, Swarup Shakti, which takes many names according to the functions of that Shakti. So, when Bhagavan is equipped with all of his Shaktis, at that time, when he expands himself, that expansion is called Swansa. Swansa. So, all of the avatars, and the, all of the expansions of the Lord in the category of Vishnu Tattva, they're called Swansa. Those Swansa are manifest at the time when the Supreme Lord, equipped with all of his ponces, expands himself. That is called Swansa. But, when the Supreme Lord yes. is equipped with only his Tatasta Shakti, at that I time... Ask, I will, I will. I will ask whether you are all hearing or not. Very soon I will go. And if not replying, I will tell them to stand up. Go. Well, Very great subject. And if you are not knowing all these things, then you are really not a pakka bhakta. If you want to be a qualified devotee, you must know all these things. Otherwise your bhakti will be second and you can fall down. I know that all the devotees of Swamiji's were not giving attention for these things, all going down. So you must try to hear him very carefully. I have written all these things, he is telling my all these things. So you should know that it is my version. Yes, Try to hear very patiently. So, when the Supreme Lord is equipped only with His Jiva Shakti, at that time, when He, he expands Himself, then those expansions, they are called Vibhim Angs, Vibhim Angs Tattva, and they are the Jivas, the separated parts and parcels of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, because the Supreme Lord is, has all so many qualities in Him, His expansions also have qualities in them eternally. They are always there. So it is not that the Swarupa of the Jiva is marginal, but rather just as the Supreme Lord eternally has so many qualities, so the Jiva also it has within Him in a latent condition so many qualities. So then Srila Siddha Maharaj, he said that if we accept that the jiva, the swarup of the jiva is not uh, fixed, if it is not there as a latent potential within him, then we will come into so many difficulties. How is that? Why? We see that when uh, one of the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is called Murari Gupta, and Murari Gupta upon associating with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him 
that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Ramachandra, who, who is the Ishtadev of Marigupta, he is the manifestation of Krishna. But Krishna is too Bhagavan Swayam. And all others, Ete Changsa Kala Pungsa, Krishna is too Bhagavan Swayam. All others, they are the manifestations of Krishna. So the worship of Krishna is the highest thing. And Krishna, he is a pillar of Samrita Sindhu. He is the ocean of all ras. He is superior to all other avatars and incarnations. So therefore you should do the do bhajan to Krishna. So Murari Gupta, he went away and he tried to do bhajan of Krishna. But he wasn't able to do that. His heart would not allow him. He had sold his head at the feet of Ramachandraji. So that night he was just crying and crying and crying. And in the morning he came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he wanted to give up his life because on the one hand he could not disobey the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu but at the same time he could not give up the service of Sri Ramachandra. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he pacified him. He said, actually I am so pleased with you. I am not disappointed in you but I am so pleased with the deep attachment you have for Lord Ramachandra. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed, actually, Murari Gupta is Hanuman. So, from this pastime, it is illustrated that even by the association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself, and by the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one's internal uh, position, one's eternal form, it cannot be changed. So, what to speak of associating with any sadhus, even associating with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it could not be changed. On the other hand, uh, sorry, also, uh, parallel to this is the pastime of Anupam. Anupam was the brother of Rupa and Sanatan. And a similar pastime took place where they, uh, uh, Anupam was advised by Rupa and Sanatan to do bhajan to, to Krishna, uh, giving up the bhajan of Ramachandra. But again, he was in the same condition and he could not give up the service of Ramachandraji even by the association of Rupa Goswami himself and Sanatan Goswami himself. So, then another pastime was given by Srila Sridhar Maharaj as evidence. We find that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was traveling in South India and he came to Sri Ranga, there he came into the company and association of uh, Ven Sri Venkatabhata, Sri Tri Malabhata and uh, Prabhupada and the Sasvati part and the son of Venkata Bhatta. His name at that time was Gopal Bhatta, later to become Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So, all of these personalities had received Diksha in the uh, line in the Ramanuja Sampradaya and they were worshipping uh, Lakshmi Narayan. But when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there, he, first of all, he was staying there for the period of Chattomasya and for three months he did not preach to them. He preached to Gopal Bhatta who was a small boy because he was not attached in this way or that way. And he was very young and impressionable and so Mahaprabhu was preaching to him. But to the older ones who were more fixed in their ways, he did not preach to them but rather by associating with him for a, a three month period they developed some love for him, some affection, some faith in him and some trust. So at that time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, in a joking way, he began to introduce the idea of this, that Krishna is superior to Narayan. So this whole pastime is narrated in Madhulila of Sri Chaitanya Charitamritam. So I will not go into that now. But as a result of the preaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Venkata Bhatta, Trima Alabhatta, Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur, and also Gopal Bhatta Goswami, they came uh, into the line, the conception of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, accepting that Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and uh, dedicating themselves to the service of Srimati Radhika. So, Sri Lashida Maharaj, he explained that the Venkata Bhatta, Srimala Bhatta, Prabhupada Sarasvati Pad, and Gopal Bhatta Goswami, they are the eternal associates of Radha and Krishna. Prabhupada Sarasvati Pad, for example, is actually Tonga Vijasaki, one of the Astasakis of Srimati Radhika. And these great personalities had descended from the spiritual sky 
to perform a leela, to perform a pastime, to show that even one may receive diksha or come in any sampradaya, but actually the eternal uh, form it, within the jiva, in, it is the swarup of the jiva, it is fixed. So even though they had come in this line, their eternal form was in the service of Radha and Krishna. And therefore, when they met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then they came into his line. So, in this way, Srila Bhaktiraksha Shita Maharaj gave many evidences and very good logic and reason to present the true Siddhanta, that the Swarupa of the Jiva, it is not Tatasta. Actually, it is an eternal, intrinsic feature of the Jiva, which can never be changed. It is only a question that it should be uncovered. So then, Srila Bhakti Rakshap Srila Dev Goswami, he requested uh, our Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj, to speak a few words on this subject. So then, Param Gurudev, he stood up and began to explain this topic. What a moment. My is coming in this guise. Huh? and he will come and cover you. First will, it will come and you will cut his jaw. Yeah. And then he will quickly come on your lips, so heavy hold you. And then you can control and then at once you use. So I want that you should do like this. In Kirtan, Jaja Radha Raman Hari Bol, Jaja Radha, and all you should try to do.
if you are not doing like so, oh, very powerful Maya, and he will come quickly, and she will see it on your lips. I know that some devotees, they don't do Hari Bol, Hari, they do Hari Bol, Hari Bol, <laughs> Hari Bol, like this. Then Maya will come at once on his ear. So not like this. Oh, then into the ground. Hari Bol, 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 Hari Bol. And not doing? Oh, if there is something here, nerves, and if you will do like this, it will come in your brain, in your heart, and keep in mind. There are some nerves in your feet. If you dance, oh, every malice will go away. They will affect your brain and your... They will purify by doing this and also doing this, and drums. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu discovered this way. Very easily you can conquer man. Otherwise, if any devotee is telling, especially Guru Vaishnava, then we should try to take it by our ear, ears. <coughs> Standing like, sitting like this, very still. Otherwise, my way. My don't want to free any living entity. living entity that they should go out of my kingdom. Because all will be empty and then she will be very worried. Nothing to do. So, you should be always careful for this. You should listen all this. So then, Maharaj. You can hey. come nearer. Oh, make a place. Prabhu, you should come forward. You should come. Uh, yes. Shri Bhakti Rachak Shida Goswami Maharaj, having spoken, then he requested Pram Gurudev. And all requests. So then, uh, Pram Gurudev stood up and very politely thanks Srila Bhaktivarachak Srila Maharaj for his wonderful explanation and said that as far as I have read in all of the Gaudiya Vaishnava literatures, whatever I have seen confirms and supports the explanation given by Srila Srila Maharaj. Then Pram Gurudev began to give a further explanation on this subject. First of all, he explained that to understand the swoop of the jiva, then a very simple example can be given. The example of a seed. If there are so many seeds, like the seed of mango tree, jackfruit tree, banyan tree, so many seeds, and they are planted on the bank of a river, then those seeds, they are planted in the same soil. They receive the same rainfall, the same sunlight, the same gardener taking care of them. And even though they have all of the same uh, treatment and same facility, yet those individual seeds, the mango seed will grow into a mango tree and bear mango fruit. The jackfruit seed will grow into a jackfruit tree and bear jackfruit. The banyan seed will grow into a banyan tree because the potential was already there in the latent position within the seed. So all jivas have the same nature, the, the, have a similar nature. This is an example to show how all jivas, they have their own particular form, particular natures, in a latent position within them. And by hearing Harikata from pure Vaishnavas, then the form which is already there will come out. Then Param Gurudev, he gave another example. He explained that at the time of a particular stellar constellation, called the Swati Nakshatra. Then when rain falls, then that rain, it produces different items when it comes in contact with various receptacles. For example, when the rain of the Swati Nakshatra comes in contact with the oyster shell, then at that time a pearl will be produced. When the rain at the time of Swati Nakshatra comes in contact 
with the uh, horns of a cow, then Garochan is produced. When the rain of the Swati Nakshatra, it comes in contact with an elephant, then the Gajamukta is produced, the elephant pearl. When it comes in contact with a snake, then the uh, Sarpamani, the uh, jewel which comes from a snake, is produced. And when it comes in contact with bamboo, with a bamboo tree, then the kamphar. Uh, oh, when it comes in contact with the banana tree, then the kamphar is produced. And when it comes in contact with the bamboo tree, then it produces vansalochan. So this, this is the same water coming from Swati Nakshatra. The water is the same. But falling into different receptacles, then different things are produced. So in the same way, when the pure sadhu, he speaks Harikata, then in this way, the jiva, he becomes nourished by the Swarup Shakti, the essence of Samvet and Ladhini, Bhakti Shakti. And being nourished by this, then the potential which is within him, it comes out. So then Param Gurudev, he gave a very wonderful example from the Jaiva Dharma of Srila Bhakti no Thakur. That uh, two devotees, Brajanath and Viju, Vijay Kumar, they both approached the same Guru and they heard Harikata from him. Yet, when their Arnathas went away, then their inclinations, different inclinations were aroused. Brajanath's inclination was to serve Krishna in Sakuras. Whereas Vijay Kumar's inclination was to serve Radha Krishna in Madhurya Ras. So they were having the same Sangha and hearing the same Harikata and yet different inclinations were aroused. So this proves that the uh, potential within, is within the Jiva. It is not coming, it is not born of association. Then Param Gurudev gave another example to further establish this very strong point. That in Bhagavatamrita, we see that Gop Kumar was traveling to many, many places. And when he met with Narad and Uddhav, then first of all, they ascertained the nature of his internal inclination and gave him instructions accordingly. And also we see that throughout Bhagavatamrita, that Gop Kumar is associating with many different people, with Hanuman, with Uddhav, with uh, Narad, and yet, even associating with such high-class devotees, his internal feeling was never changed. So then Pram Gurudev explained that if the soul is naturally in a higher ras, then taking the association and doing bhajan in a lower ras, then after some time that devotee, he will feel uh, dissatisfied and he will hanker for something more, something more, and he will go on and on and on. Then, as a further evidence, Srila Bhakti Pagan Kesha Maharaj, Turn to the commentary of Srila Bhakti no Thako, Sanbhod and Vasan, on the Shikshastika of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, particularly the verse Chaito Darpana Marjanam, Baba Maha Davagni Nivarapanam, Surya Kaliva Chandra Kavitaranam, Vidya Vadhu Jivanam. Here it is described very clearly, Chaito Darpana Marjanam, that when the chitta, the very fine covering of the soul, becomes cleansed, then at that time, Shreya Karma Chandrika Vitaranam, and when the Swarup Shakti begins to manifest within the heart, then Vidya Vadhu Jivanam, then the internal form of the Jiva, whatever form is inherently already there, will come out. And those who have the eligibility for Madhurya Ras, they will feel themselves, I am the eternal maid servant of Srimati Radhika. Bhakti Thakur has written this very uh, clearly in his commentary on the Shikshastikam of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So then, uh, Param Gurudev, he began to explain that as the sadhak, he goes on doing bhajan, and his anarts are gradually cleansed away, then he comes into the stage of ruchi. And this ruchi is a particular type of ruchi. And by the particular type of ruchi in the uh, sadhak, then he gets a clue, some indication of his eternal form. And as he goes on doing bhajan, then as, when he comes into the stage of asakti, then he will have to take the association of a guru who is in the same mood as he is uh, according to his internal identity. 
Therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad has written, Srimad Bhagavatatanam Ashvado Rasika Saha Sajati Asha Esnik Dei Sadhu Sangha Swato Bare One must taste the meanings of Srimad Bhagavatam in the company of a Rasik Vaishnav. And more than that, Sajati Asha Esnik Dei Sadhu Sangha Swato Bare Doing Sadhu Sangha with a Vaishnav who is superior to oneself and who is also a Snik Dei. That means that he is he has, he is particularly uh, disposed to one with great affection. And also, Swajata Yashaye, meaning being Swajat in the same mood. In other words, the, that sadhu has a particular mood, and you also have a particular eternal mood. So you have to come into the association of such a sadhu who has the same inherent mood as you. And then, by gradually hearing from him, the abbas of the chitsvarup, in other words, the semblance of one's internal identity will manifest in the heart. Then, and only then, at that time, will the, such a very rasik and self-realized Vaishnav impart ekadas bhav, or the, all the internal characteristics of the swarup, of that sadhak, just to help him come into the stage of swarup siddhi. Therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad, he has written, Kritisadya bhavet sadya bhavasa sadhana vidha nitya siddhasya bhavasya prakatyam vridhi sadhyata Such an advanced devotee, he is really a sadhak. And by the mercy of his Bhajan uh, Shiksha Guru, then what will happen? Nitya siddhasya bhavasya prakatyam vridhi sadhyata That the nitya siddha bhav, the eternal mood, which is nitya siddh, it is already established there within his heart, Prakatyam Vridhi Sadhyata. That Prakat, that mood which is already there, will become manifest. So this is the uh, conclusion of all the uh, disciplic acharyas, of Srila Rupa Goswami, of Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur, and Srila Jiva Goswami. This is also, this conclusion has been confirmed by Srila Bhakti Rasha Srila Goswami Maharaj. And Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj has also very eloquently and brilliantly with such expert logic and also Shastric evidences established this point. So upon hearing this, all of the Vaishnavas became so elated, they were overjoyed. And Sri Bhakti Rishi Keshe Maharaj, he stood up and said, I would like to thank Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj and Srila Shri Maharaj for dispelling this doubt which I had harbored within my heart for such a very long time. Thank you. Brahmachari will speak something. You shall try to understand all these logics. And if you are not understanding, again you should ask me or anyone who knows. Don't be lazy in these things. Oh, I cannot understand. I will not understand. Never you should. Yeah. Really, this is called East Goshti Arbhajan. A guru comes to help the devotees in this way. And if Guru Dev is not helping devotees in this way, oh, he is not good. Money taking some money, 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 prestige and all these things. And not giving all these things, then he is a bogus guru. He should be rejected. And by following that guru, you cannot have Braja Prem or Krishna Prem, which is the life, which is the goal of the life. So you should try to realize all these things. This lecture, Maharaj, is this, this I've written all these things in this book. And in this book. And so many things are in this book. You can have this book and it will help you in your sadhan bhajan. You should all try to collect. Prabhupada Antaranga Shisvaru Parupanova Shake Shava Prakati Pratya Maya Vadata. Gauriya Vedanta Veta Mayavada Tamahanta Gauravani Prachara Charadham Vanchakal Tatru Heshita Pass in Nukhe Imita Patitanam Pavanipro Vaishnavi Pro Namo Namaha.
I offer my heartfelt and pranams to the Lotus Feet of Srila Guru Maharaj and beg for his causeless mercy so that I can explain something which I have heard from him. And I also pay my respectful obeisances to all the Vaishnavas who are present here and uh, I try to say something which I have understood. Srila Bhakti Pagyan Kishu Goswami Maharaj has given many wonderful instructions for us to follow. And the very first, first instruction which he has given is that only and only by intimately serving our Gurudev we can achieve pure bhakti. There's no other way possible. So we see as he has given these instructions, he has also followed them in his life. Shilvakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he had many wonderful disciples who were very great in many aspects. They were learners, they were scholars, they were pure devotees, they know the philosophy, they could convince people to follow and they can bring people in the lotus feet of Shilap Bhakti Siddhanta Saswati Thakur Prabhupada and thus they were fulfilling his innermost desires. But Shilap Bhakti Siddhanta Saswati Thakur never addressed any of his disciples except the two with uh, intimate words like in Bengali and Hindi we have a different address for those who are very much close to us or very dear to us. We call them Dom, Dumi, like that. And those who are elder to us, we address them Aap or Apani, like that. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sasri Thakur, he used to address all his disciples as Aap or Apani, never saying Dom or Dumi. But to Srila Bhakti Pradhyan Kishu Goswami Maharaj and to Paramananda Guru, he always addressed them as Dumi or Tu. So this shows that how dear they were and intimate to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saswati Thakur. And thus they were able to imbibe all of his inner moods. And his spirit also, his deep emotions to carry out the words of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Rupa Goswami, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they carried his message all over the world. And they carried it with so much strength and conviction that people would definitely have to bow down in front of them. Nobody could defeat them. Nobody could refute their arguments. They were so strong and bold in their speech. Uh, I had the fortune to go through one of the last last sections of Sri Paramgurudev Lilamrit, which Shri Guru Maharaj has recently compiled in Hindi. That book has been published. When we go in India, we'll have that. And Shri Prem, uh, Prem Prajan Prabhu and other Brahmacharis, they're also trying to do the English translation of it. So in the last section, uh, Shri Guru Maharaj has explained how Shri Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj has written very wonderful Vaishnava literatures. And they are ornamented with the Gaudiya Vedanta philosophy all the teachings, all the doctrines, and also they're so melodious and they're full of so much sweet nectarian pastimes and uh, uh, so much internal emotions that if we go through them with sincerity and in the same mood as he's trying to tell us, we will definitely realize that who he is, who he is, and by his mercy we can also imbibe those moods. So, when in his explanation of uh, Sri Radha Vinod Bihari Tattvashtakam, where he is explaining how Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu is non different from Krishna, when he goes on, then Sri Guru Maharaj writes that once when they were hearing this explanation from Param Guruji, then he explained that once when Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sasri Thakur had uh, displayed his disappearance past time on this planet, then afterwards he happened to visit Prayag, Nilava, and he was staying there with Sri Abhay Charanarbinda Prabhu, that is Sri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj. At that time he was Sri Abhay Charanarbinda Prabhu. So he was staying with him and they used to have very nice exchanges and also very deep discussions in philosophy. And Sri Param Guru Maharaj was very well known throughout since he joined the mud for his sharp and 
intelligence and presence of mind. His logics were so appropriate and so exact that even great advocates would become stunned and they could not resist to come and have his advice on many different uh, topics which they could not reconcile. So, when he was staying there, there was one friend of Sri Avicharan Prabhu who was an advocate in the High Court in Ilabad. He used to visit Sri Avicharan Prabhu and when Param Guruji was present there, then Sri Avicharan Prabhu introduced him to Param Guruji and at that time uh, also Param Guruji was uh, known as Kriti Ratna Prabhu and this title was given to him by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsvati Thakur himself. So he introduced him to Param Guruji and told him how he was so... Uh, Very good, um, high class of philosopher. High class of philosopher. Kriti Ratna. Kriti means uh, fame and Ratna means jewel. So his expertise and his qualities to understand Kriti the philosophy... Kriti means not fame only. Activities. Accomplishments. Yes, like this. That is Krishna Bhakti. In all activities, Bhakti is so much high and prominent. So this is like a jewel, not ordinary, ordinary jewel. What kind of jewel? It can get like uh, achintamani or desire, desire stone. stone. So he gave that he has so much uh, guru nishtha. Guru nishtha means. And he has so much a strong faith in Krishna Bhakti. So he gave this title to our Guru. So when this advocate came to know the glories of Sri Kriti Ratna Prabhu and as he was talking and he was very much impressed by his eloquent sweet speech and wonderful way of expressing most intricate philosophical conclusions. So he liked him very much and what he did, another day when he came, he brought along with him another person who was a bishop, church bishop. And this person was also well known in that area as a very great philosopher, a Christian philosopher. And he was also a very strong preacher of Christianity. So when they all came together, then this advocate introduced Kirti Ratna Prabhu with this church bishop and they were sitting together and he himself, this advocate, in order to just uh, kind of ignite a wonderful discussion, a warm discussion, he started saying something and uh, as the discussion started flowing, this church bishop, because he had heard of Kriti uh, Ratna Prabhu from this advocate before, that is also very great philosopher and all that, so he was like kind, kind of prepared to ask few questions. So he turned towards Kriti Ratna Prabhu and asked him, uh, why do you worship black color Krishna? Because black is not a good color. Why do you worship black, black color Krishna? So when he asked this question, Kriti Ratna Prabhu smiled and he started answering him. He said, black is no color. And we understand from science also, black is actually no color. So he says, we don't worship any color of this material world. That means we don't worship any material qualities or anything which is subjected to the modes of material nature, sattva, raja and tam. We worship that transcendental object which is beyond these modes, which is completely transcendental and divine and spiritual in nature. So we don't worship black or we don't worship any color, but we worship that supreme absolute truth which is beyond the material sub, uh, modes of nature and material qualities. That is called Nirgun. We worship that Nirgun Brahman. So, the church bishop, when he heard this, then he was satisfied and then he quickly asked another question. And he said, okay, I can understand that because we should definitely worship 
somebody who is completely screened. So I'm understanding what you're trying to say. Though it was difficult for him to actually understand the whole thing because he is uh, he doesn't have the complete understanding of Shuddha Gauriya Bhakti, Shuddha Bhakti from uh, from the line of Gauriya. But still he was satisfied. And then he asked another question. He said, then why you worship uh, fair complexion Goranga Mahaprabhu? If you don't worship black, that I uh, you worship black, I understand. But then why gold? Because Mahaprabhu's complexion is golden, fair complexion. So then Kriti Ratan Prabhu answered. He said, in this world, whatever you see is a combination or resultant effect of different mixtures of three modes of material nature. So these modes are abominable and they are always distressful. So they cause always suffering. Anything in connection to this material world modes can never give us happiness and peace because it in itself is distressful. But beyond this world, in the transcendental world, that place is full of all spiritual and transcendental attributes. There's so many good virtuous qualities. And Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu embodies all those good divine qualities. His bodily luster reflects a combination of all those wonderful spiritual colors. And then he gave a very nice example to, in order to make it understand for the Sri Bishop. He said, just like we see the sunlight is white, but actually if we analyze it then we'll see it is actually a combination of seven different colors. And in English we have that whip, your violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. So he said, just like sometimes there some sun is shining and also there's some sprinkles of rain there, then a rainbow is formed. And in that rainbow we can see seven colors. But when they are coming together, then it is seen as a white light. What? So the, uh, golden color. Like. Golden complexion, golden color, sunlight. So similarly, Sri Gaurishandra, his bodily luster actually is a mixture of all those transcendental beautiful qualities, wonderful qualities. So that's why we worship Sri Gaurishandra. And now his, uh, uh, the struck bishop was like he completely dumbstruck. He could not speak anything more because it was completely so scientific and so uh, <laughs> logical explanation that he could not, he just was, he was just admiring. So then he was feeling a little bit, uh, uh, yeah, in his heart, but still he tried to keep his <laughs> sentiments together, emotions, and then he again spoke. He said, okay, but why there is need of worshipping a cowherd boy? <laughs> you are worshipping a cowherd boy. <laughs> I don't understand this, I cannot understand this. Then Kriti Ratnapu said, yes, you cannot understand because you worship a shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, a shepherd can be worshipped, then why cannot we worship a person who is taking care of cows? <laughs> and cows, they are so wonderful and they are so helping. They are like mother, they are nourishing the whole world. So why cannot we worship them? So then the church bishop and the advocate, yes, both of them, they were really impressed and enamored and they were so happy. And they glorified Param Guruji's presence of mind and his explanation. And then he... Yes, yes. And all this was in the presence of Sri Abhicharan Prabhu because it was his house and he was present there in that discussion. He embraced Guru Maharaj. Abhicharan. Oh, you are so intelligent. <laughs> And then he used to respect so much. And that is why he took sannyas from him. And he saw that Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Goswami Maharaj, my friend, my elder god brother, he is very near and dear to Siddha Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Goswami. He can help me. And that is why he came to Mathura and he took sannyas from him. I was witness. I was priest, I made sannyas dress, done everything and gave to Swamiji. My Guru Maharaj wanted that he should. He is very qualified person and especially he is master of English literature. He can preach every this mission. And then he gave sannyas and he took. Swami Maharaj is not a gentleman. Ordinary person. Ordinary person. So if he has accepted him like sannyasa, 
elder brother, like that. How he should be high class of devotee? You can listen. Very good. Go on. So we see throughout his life, in his all circumstances, he was so much uh, uh, active and very sharp in his uh, movements that people would definitely get carried away by his personality and they would just offer it themselves and put their hearts to him and just take him in, his, in their heart and give him a place there. So similarly in the, in the same section of the book, Shri Guru Maharaj has explained how Param Guruji was so strongly and uh, a bit uh, completely irrefutable arguments he has defeated and cutted the Mayavad forest, the forest of impersonalism. Actually he has compiled a book which is called uh, History of Impersonalism and he went back so much deep into it that he started from Satya Yuga and brought that what is the origin of Mayavad. What is Mayava? How it came till this point? And he has actually it seems that he was not just. Uh, it's difficult to conceive a little bit because we understand since the time he came in the mud. Uh, in the morning we were hearing that he was managing the whole Chaitanya mud, but factually when he came there was nothing to manage actually, because Srila Prabhupada was himself and there were one or two brahmacharis. There was nothing to manage. All the state and everything was actually taken care, uh, over by these Muslims and they were not paying taxes and anything. So Param Guruji, when he saw Srila Bhaktisthan Sasu Thakur's concern for this thing that is actually land of Mahaprabhu, is Bhaktivinoda Thakur's land and is not being used in the service. So noticing their, noticing the mood of his Guru and taking his permission, he began and one by one he actually uh, got hold of, of all the land and then it all began to flourish and uh, many new devotees started coming and later on if we have time we'll also hear how Puja Bhakti Saran Goswami Maharaj came to much by Shilparam Guru Maharaj's association. It was so much because his cooking was so delicious. Not just uh, his Siddhanta or his Bhakti, his every activity, his uh, uh, architecture, how to put, uh, how to install deities, how to make temples was so accurate and it would always have deep philosophical input that how everything is a reflection of the spiritual world in this world, transcendental world. So, he actually did everything and from since that day he was always engaged in managing everything, taking care of devotees and everything. So, we wonder when does he had the time to read these uh, scriptures, these Bhakti Granthas, so that he's able to give so much nice explanation of that. And at that time when we heard that how he was sitting under the jackfruit tree and his feet were on the table and he was in the chair and he was flipping like this and all the sannyasis were coming and they were paying obeisance to going in the temple room and Shri Shridhar Maharaj, Pujapa Shridhar Maharaj was very much astonished to see. At that time Shri Prabhupada called him later on because he was amazed why he is not uh, uh, reciprocating this white uh, colored person who is wearing white dress. He should reciprocate and he is not reciprocating so it feels that he is very proud of his own position or something like that. Tiny, uh, teeny edge, yeah. not so edge. Yes. So when they came and reported this matter to Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, then he called Vinod Bihari Brahmachari and he said, "What were you doing?" And he said, "I was sitting on the chair." And he said, "What were you doing? Uh, you were sitting and something was happening." He said, "Yes, I was going through all the 550 sutras of Vedanta and <laughs> arranging them nicely so that I can give explanation and uh, express it in a certain way." So his sitting was also not like you know simple sitting. He was going through Vedanta Sutra, which is something that uh, not any any ordinary person can even think of you know understanding. Written by Shri Vyasadeva, it's very strong. So in this Mayavad, uh, uh, in the history of impersonalism, he has not just given Vaishnava logics or uh, doctrines on impersonalism. But he has also given all the uh, questions from the sides of Shankaracharya and other people who are speaking in favor of impersonalism. So he is quoting from their scriptures. So he's read even their all the books and quoting them everywhere and then he's refuting them one by one. So they cannot ask any further questions anymore. So at one place he says, Acharya Shankar, he is well known uh, propagator of Mayavad. So. His Gurudev, from whom he took initiation, is uh, uh, Govindapad. And Govindapad's Gurudev is Gaurupad. 
So Srila Param Gurudev writes, Sri Gorba is actually well known uh, in the line of impersonalism because he has written one commentary on Vedanta Sutra, giving impersonal... Uh, Not Vedanta Sutra. Mandukya Karika. Mandukya Karika. Vedanta Sutra Dhanini. Mm -hmm. So he has written a commentary on impersonalism, for impersonal philosophy, and it's called Mandukya Karika. And Sri Govindapal, his disciple, did not wrote anything. So, actually, Acharya Shankar is taken to be disciple of Gaurupa because he accepted his own moods and he propagated everything, what Gaurupa said. So, he wrote commentary on, on Manduti, Mandukya Karika, Sri Acharya Shankar Pad, and which is very much respected. So, when Gaurupa has left this world, or he has achieved his mukti, what they were propagating in the line, and after going the path, has also left this world. Then one day it is mentioned, this is in the life history of uh, Acharya Shankar, Srila Param Gurudev is quoting, it's mentioned in his uh, life history. One day he was sitting in his trance, and as he was sitting in his trance, his grand Gurudev, grand spiritual master, appeared to him, Gorupa, and he said, O oh Shankar, I'm very pleased, and uh, your Gurudev, that is my disciple Govindapad has informed me that you have written very beautiful commentary on my uh, work, Mandukya Karika. And he's appreciating it so much. I want to see, please bring it to me. So Acharya Shankar was very much happy to see his grand spiritual master and he was talking to him <coughs> uh, brought this uh, commentary written by him and presented to his grand spiritual master Gaurupad. And he saw that he was very much happy. Yes, 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 you have done very good. And he blessed him, and then he left from there. So, Shri Param Guru, they says, now, this is like in the ending chapters of the book. And throughout, throughout he is very nicely explained and put all the points what Mayavad is saying. So, what they basically say, I'll just speak like a few sentences so that we can connect to what Shri Param Guru is going to say. Mayavad's philosophy says that Brahma, or the supreme truth, according to them, is completely void. This does not have any qualities, is devoid of any attributes. No shape, no attribute, no power, nothing. nothing. And when a jiva, which is actually Brahma. Brahma himself, why? Because of the influence of Maya, the Brahma is seen as jiva. So when one attains this knowledge that he is Brahma itself and Maya is uncovered, then he merges in Brahma. His own spiritual identity or his individual self is completely annihilated and he becomes one with Brahma, he becomes Brahma because he is Brahma himself to begin with. So they don't agree to existence of anything. There is no form, there is no shape, there is no qualities, there's nothing, there's no interaction, there, there's no two persons, there's only one thing which is Brahm, nothing more exists. So, Sri Paramahara Guru says, when they're saying all these things, then how come it is possible in the first place that Govindapad and Gaurapad, they were talking to each other after they have attained Mukti? <laughs> and they have become Brahma, no, no shape at all. How they came? So how Govindapad could inform this act of Acharya Shankar to Gaurapad? And not only that, how Gaurapad could again appear to Acharya Shankar and talk to him? Because he cannot appear anymore, he is completely annihilated. And then, uh, not only that, if we agree that this is true, then Acharya Shankar's life comes uh, to, uh, seems that it is false, this thing does not happen in his life. Then they're all scriptures. The authenticity of the scriptures is completely challenged. And if we take this as truth, then how come that is possible? So then he says, we understand that actually Mayavad is nothing, but it's simply word jugglery that they try to trap people in that. And actually none of the impersonalist preachers or founders or propagators have ever attained any such mukti which they are propagating. What to speak of those who are trying to follow? Even Shankar he never attained Brahma. Because? Go on. Because? Because it is said in his last days, 
uh, again, Acharya Shankar himself, according to the impersonalist philosophy, he has appeared again as Vidya Ratna. Huh? Vidya Ratna can also No, Vidya Ratna. No. Ikorna. He yes. name? Vidya. Vidyaranya. Ah, vid, vidyaranya. Vidyaranya Bharati. Vidyaranya. He appeared again. Shri Acharya Shankar has come again in the form of Vidyaranya Bharati. So how come he attained Mukti if he is again coming back? And also it is said that Acharya Shankar, he had this uh, Shastric scriptural debate with many of uh, at, uh, many of the spiritual uh, followers who were present at that time. But Though he defeated many, he could never defeat any Vaishnava. And there is no, in, no instance... He avoided, always avoided Vaishnava. Never he went to any pure Vaishnava. Because he knew that he will be defa defeated there. So he never went to any Vaishnava. He only went to Karmi and Jnani and others. Smartha and Bodha. Not to any pure devotee. And it is said that in his last days, Acharya Shankar was defeated by one of the Buddhist monks. And not Buddhist monk, Bhaskara Acharya. Was he was a smart, greatest smart. Bhaskara Acharya, and they had a condition before they had this debate that one who will lose, he will give up his life by jumping in, into the boiling uh, oil. Oh, Buddhist in in Tibet. Lama. Lama. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So, and this Lama was like their, uh, the head of the, uh, the tradition at that time. So, and that's what happened. Acharya Shankar lost his debate and he gave up his life by jumping into the boiling vessel. That's how Sri Paranguji says that one of the very uh, valuable jewels of impersonalism heroes. was heroes was disappeared from this place. And uh, we feel the lacking. Hare thank you. Now, Navin Krishna Brahmachari will speak something. Oh, sometimes I went to Pujapa Siddhar Maharaj after mm, my Guru Maharaj left this world. Disappeared from this world. And he has so much love and affection for me, Sri Pujyapashi Dharmara. Because I used to Sir, question so many logical things that he always has so much love and affection for me. And he used to tell me answer very sweetly. So once he was tell, telling that, do you know your Gurudev? Oh. Then he told so many stories about that when he was a student of law and in his last year he went to visit Mayapur and he wanted to meet with Srila Prabhupada. But when he entered and saw that a very tiny as a very beautiful Brahmachari, quite dressed and beautiful, with a stick, a stick, very good, very good stick, and well dressed, and horse, a very high class of horse was there <laughs> for him, and he was doing his feats like this, sitting on a table, and so many um, high class of sannyasis coming him to them, and just that briefly folded them. He used to ask something. And that boy, oh, um, doing same, in the same position he used to tell something. And they do, again they pranam used to do pranam. Mm -hmm. Who is he, this boy? I wanted to know. And when I asked this question, Sridhar Maharaj was telling, but I, I asked that, who is that boy? Hmm? He is very Grave. Grave and very wonderful. Hmm? Then they thought, oh, you don't know. He is Vinod Bihari Brahmachari. <laughs> he is very powerful. He has made this uh, Mayapur. Mayapur. 
and he has changed the shape of Maya. He is very near and dear to Srila Prabhupada and he is very logic, his logic is very strong, strong and he is a very great philosopher. And after that Siddhar Maharaj went to see Srila Prabhupada and he was so much charmed with Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> and then he decided that I should give up my whole worldly life and everything and I should join this movement. And then quickly he gave up all these things and he joined. So all these disciples of Srila Prabhupada were jewels. They can conquer whole world. So there, my Gurudev was one of the best jewel of Srila Prabhupada. Go. Omnud Gyalati Miranda Sagananjana Salakaya Chakchurun Militanji Natasma Sri Gurave Namaha Bancha Kalpatu Pascha Pipas in the Payevacha Patitan and Pavanipo Vishna Vipo Namuna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare First of all, I pay my humble obeisance simultaneously. My initiated Gurudev and instructed Gurudev, Sila Bhaktivedanta Bhamanu Sai Maharaj and Sila Bhaktivedanta Narayana Sai Maharaj. After that, who assembled here to hear Harikatha, the life, history and Siddhanta of my Param Gurudev, I pay my humble obeisances to them according to their eligibility. So Gurudev ordered me to discuss something about his life history and his instructions. So that this assembly is going on his philosophical side. So I want everything. To uh, his philosophical side and also his life transcendental. So life. at first I want to discuss something about his philosophy. In one hand he was a great philosopher, and other hand he was a Jacob's Vaishnav. Sri Prajan Prabhu gave one example about his this he was a Jacobist Krishna by another he was a great philosopher. So I want to add another point with Prem Prajan Prabhu. Then Prem Prajan Prabhu give an example that one guru and their two disciples Vijay Kumar and Brajanath, their mood was different, being disciple of same guru. We can go through another example. There is a great guru there, name was Naradrishi. He has one disciple, his name is Dhruva Maharaj. What is his position? He was Sakam Bhakta. Another disciple was Narad, uh, disciple of Narad Rishi was Parlad Maharaj. There is pure process, five are prominent and seven are secondary. He was not even disciple of any five prominent process. In another example, Vyasdev also was disciple of Narad Rishi. By his grace, he bhakti yagyana manasi samma pranihiti amale apatsat purusam purunam mayancha jagapasvayam. By the grace of Guru Padmasla Narad Rishi, so Vyasdev saw everything in his trance, the first times of Krishna, the meeting with Krishna with his sakhas and his parents, and specially with gopis, which he explained everything in condensed form in Bhagavatam, because in Bhagavat he composed in any some slokas. So if we go through these slokas with commentary of Srila Vishnachakravati Thakur, or special in tenth canto of Sanatana Goswami Pad and Jeeva Goswami Pad, then how then we can understand how Jakovic Goswami of Srila Vasudeva was. So being Three disciples, one Guru there were three disciples that three mode. So Jiva Sarup is always fixed, but it never be changed, so we can understand by these three examples. And and the time of Prabhupada, nowadays also we sometimes quarrel with each other. Why? For our sense gratification. But the time of Prabhupada, they also quarreled each other sometime. Very rare. Why? I shall serve Prabhupada more, I shall serve Prabhupada more. 
So Prabhupada, there are two very intimate disciples. That is Prem Kalaha. It is called Prem Kalaha. One was Parmananda Prabhu, another was Sri Lavinod Vihari Brahmachari. They are both bosom friends. They are both bosom friends. Somehow or other, they became disturb each other in the service of Prabhupada. I shall serve more, I shall serve more. Then once Prabhupada calls everyone and ordered Vinod Vihari Brahmachari, Vinod, stand up and glorify Paramananda. Then Param Gurudev, doing invocation slow, Mukam karati bachalam pangam langhate girim japripata mohang bande paramananda madhavam. In this sloka, Mukam karati bachalam. Mukam means who is not great siddhanta be. If he serves Gurudev in Vishrama mood, then he will be talkative person, means he will, he can learn all Siddhanta by grace of Guru Padma. So Mukam Karati Bajalam, Pongum Lang Hate Girim. Pongum means lame person. Lame person never can across a mountain. Here mountain means the Siddhanta of Bhakti. Bhakti. So if you serve Guru Padma, if you surrender yourself, the lotus feet of Bonafide Guru Padma, and you serve him in Vishrama mood, then all Siddhanta will manifest in your heart by grace of Guru Padma. All mantra will manifest in your heart, they will reveal yourself by grace of Guru Padma. Spangum Lang Hate Grim, Jat Kripa Tamahang Bande, by whose mercy I pay him. Who is that? Paramananda Madhavam. That means Madhav who is Paramananda. So Prabhupada disciple name also. The servant of Madhav. He is also Paramananda. Yes. So I am praying this Madhav. So, Madhav. so disciple of Prabhupada, that means. Paramudha is bosom friend of Paramananda, so he is Paramananda, means this devotee of Madhav is Paramananda, that means disciple of Prabhupada, so I am praying him also, I am glorifying him. Then Paramudha put in another slow, Aho Bhaggam, Aho Bhaggam, Nanda Gopada Jaukasam, Jan Mitra Paramanandam, Purna Brahma Sanatanam. Aho Bhaggam, Aho Bhaggam. Aho Bhagya Maho Bhagya Nanda Baba Prajyoka Samho, how fortunate, how fortunate of the, who lives in Nanda Braj, that means who is the residence of Braj. In Nanda Gaon. In Nanda Gaon. Not only the Brajabhasis, they are also the grass, creepers and cows, cows, all are Prajyoka Sam, then who reside in, resides in Braj. How fortunate are they? Why? Janamitram Paramanandam Purna Brahma Sanatanam. Janamitram. Whose friend is who? Purna Brahma Sanatanam. Purna Brahma means who is Sen Bhagavan. What is his quality? Paramanandam. So, Paramgurudev is so intelligent in one, by in one word he is glorifying two. One is Paramananda Krishna, another his devotee, the disciple of Prabhupada, Paramananda Prabhu. Then Param Gurudev quoted in one condensed form of Vedanta Sutra, Ananda Mayo Bhasat, Ananda Mayo Bhasat. For explaining this work, he quoted this, Aho Bhaggam, Aho Bhaggam. So, who is Paramananda? In one hand, he is Supreme Personal, the Godhead, and another hand, is devotee of Paramananda, disciple of Prabhupada, Paramananda Prabhu, I am glorifying both of them. So Prabhupada became so pleased, and he is hearing his explanation of Ananda Mayabhasa. Param Guru, Srila Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, donate his all Vedanta Sutra to Bhakti Binu, Srila Binod Vihari Brahmachari. All Vedanta Grantha. All Vedanta Grantha, and philosophy. Full of philosophy, all the other ones are like Sri Bhasya, Sri Bhasya, Raman um, Madhva Bhasya, Sri Madhva, Shankar Bhasya, Shankar Bhasya, all books we donate to donate. Our Param Guru Dev Sri Lakshmi Prakash and Kesav Goswami Maharaj. I told that I see that only you have so much interest in Vedanta Sutra, and I see that all disciples, my disciples, they have no interest. So I want to donate my whole. This philosophical box to you, and he gave it. And then he gave a uh, name, Upadhi, 
उपाधि मीन्स टाइटल टाइटल और कृति रत्न वेरी हाई क्लास ऑफ दिस नेम तो ही एंड देन ही टोल दैट ही इज अ वेरी बोनाफाइड डिवोटी एंड क्विकली वी विल प्रीच इन होल वर्ल्ड तो वी यू आर सीन ऑल दिस थिंग So once we went to Mayapur with Guru Dev to Param Puri Parthuja Charan Shri Bhakti Vichar Jajavar Gosai Maharaj. At that time, Shri Jajavar Gosai Maharaj explaining was explaining to Guru Dev. Your Guru Dev was so intelligent during court case. He never think that how what he have to reply. He has to reply. Suppose that he is ready as before. That he knows that they want to ask this question. So, Pujya Vajayavar Maharaj explained to Guru Dev that Guru Dev means many people. Yes. Many people. Yes. Huh? Point of view. I am not going to say that. Yes, I am going to say that. Like the Guru Maharaj, just like the Guru Maharaj, like you, you are doing what you are doing. You are doing what you are doing. You are doing what you are doing. Is oh, oh so no. when he was in court, so court means according to Indian language, in Sanskrit language and Bengal in the Naya Loy. So they asked Param Guru Dev, why you came here in court in Naya Loy? Then Param Guru Dev replied, only, only bad persons comes for quarrelling, making cases, and never a sane person comes in court. Then he replied, "Only bad person is to come in court who always call each other. Never any saintly person came in this court. In this court here, who came here? Then Parvati then became so brave and replied, 'It is Naya Loy. So only saintly person know what is Na. Na means appropriate. Huh? Na. What's Na? Justice. 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 Where is justice? Justice. justice. So." This is a place of justice, not for bad person. This is a place of justice, not for bad person. So I came here. Then opponent, opposite of lawyer asked him, the saintly person always live in jungle, always live in forest. Why you came here? Why are you living in town? This is not good for you. Parunato yes, we are living in jungle. He became astonished. Well, you are living in jungle, well, yes. Then for the people, how you are living in jungle? Then Parvati the quoted one slok from Padma Purana. Ahara nidra bhayamai thu nancha samanna me tat kasubhi na ranam dharma hi tesa madhik visesa dharma na hi na pasubhi samana. That means eating, sleeping, peering, mating is common to all as well as human beings. But speciality of human beings, they can do bhajan, they can associate with Vaishnavas. Who are not doing bhajan? Who are not associating with Krishna? Was they are two-footed and tailless animal? So two-legged animal. So all of you are not doing bhajan. So all of you are animal. So I am living with you. So animal lives in forest. So I live with you. So I am living in forest. <laughs> so proper logic was infallible. None can cut it with logic. So Kuchh Jawa Jawa Maharaj was telling to Guru Dev. Then how great how great personality he was your Guru Dev. So now I am coming how Jakos he was. Jakos means Jakos means Rasik person. Jakos person. Jakos means Rasik. Jakos J A C O S. Jakos person. You can tell Rasik only, not Jakos. What is Jakos? Jakos never heard. No. New. This is new. It is Latin language, no? No, I can show in English dictionary. I have it with me. Oh, in Latin. Latin language. No, 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 no Wrote, composed so sweetly, Prabhupada Rati. At that time, in all Gaudiya Mart, especially in Chaitanya Chaitanya Mart in Mayapur, they also recite his kirtan. 
Prabhupada Arati Kirtan, reading Prabhupada Arati. But they don't want to mention Paramgurudev's name. Somehow or other it comes to Paramgurudev, that in Chaitanya Mahat, nowadays they are also reciting your Prabhupada Arati. Probably became so pleased. Then they told, but they are not mentioning your name. At last you mentioned that Sevadar se Naravari Chamara Bhulai, Sri Kesava Utyananda Nidajanagai. They are not put, they are not reciting your name. Then Paramdev Gaul became so happy, no problem. But they are reciting Prabhupada Kirtan, I am so happy hearing this. In his Kirtan, he composed there are so many verses, Bhakati Siddhanta Deepa Jaliya Jagate, Pancha Rasa Seva Sikha Pradip Tata Hate. That during Arati, we offer incense at first. So what is that incense? Bhakati Siddhanta Deep. That means, Bhakati Siddhanta means the Siddhanta of devotion. Devotion has two types. One is called regulative devotion, another spontaneous devotion. So, and by this, by this Arati Parangu, they want to teach the whole world that how great personality was Srila Prabhupada. He taught the whole world the Panchara Seva Sikha, that means the five prominent Rasa, Santa, Dasa, Sokha, Vatsala and Madhur. By his deep means lamb, he is so in the whole world that Prabhupada who will take shelter of Srila Prabhupada Bhuktisar Sadi Thakur. He can learn very easily all these things. Mm. So another logic I want to remember. See, so, Jib Goswami Pad, he mentioned in his Tattva Sandarva, the proof of, there are ten proofs. Pratyaksha, Paratsha, Aitijya, Sabdik, so many anuman, so many things. Among this pratyaksha means which we earn by our senses, it is called pratyaksha. Ovanshila Gurudev was traveling with Param Gurudev from Mathura to Navadip Dham. In the meantime, one railway magistrate came and seen them. He asked, Have you seen God? Why are you worshiping God? Have you seen? Then Param Gurudev asked him, uh, well, he, he, uh, have you seen God? Why you believe in God? Then Paul asks, which you have seen, you believe in God? Which, be, which you have seen, you believe that no. thing? Very uh, easy words you should again tell you. So Very clearly. One, one atheist person, railway minister came and asked Param Gurudev, have you seen God? He, he, without seeing anything, I never believe. None can see God. Then Paramudev replied, Only which you have seen, you have faith on that only? Well, yes. Which I never seen, I have never faith. Ah. What he told? He, he's saying that he, the, the railway magistrate will only believe what he sees. Hmm. And if you can't show him God, then he won't believe in God. Hmm. Yeah. Then Paramudev replied, I can prove. Without seeing so many things, you bound to believe and you have faith. Then he asked, you know, people, yes, I can prove. Then Paramudev put one very beautiful logic. Paramudev replied that, what is your father name, please? He replied, Ramdas. And who is your family member? He told, my father, my mom, my brother, my sister. Anybody else will I want servant? What is servant name? Then it will utter some, some name. Then Paramudev told, the Ramdas is not your father, that, that no, servant Krishnadas is your father. I, I am telling. Well, how you can prove that he is your father? Have you seen ever when your parents meeting each other? Why do you are of the time? So without seeing meeting your parents, how you can pay that he is your father? So without seeing anything, you bound to believe. Similarly, our scriptures like mother. Sometimes mother can tell lie, but our scripture never tell lie. So you have to keep faith in scripture, then you can see God only by 
vision of scripture as you can see God, otherwise not possible. Then Paramuru Dev make him speechless. Then he bound to admit. Then Paramuru Dev giving one example. What to say about God? You could not see your own face without help of eyes. And I, eyes could not see without help of mirror. So if you want to see God, you have to take help of scriptures and help of sadhus. So he became struck down and went away. Now time is over and they have told so many things. I want that you should digest all these things. And other things are very philosophical, very high class of philosophy. So you cannot digest. So let first digest all these things. But I will tell that the bhajan, the backbone of bhajan, what is that? Guru Nishtha. What is Guru Nishtha? A strong faith in Guru. But you will have to see that if you have a, a strong faith that this tamarind tree is mango tree, then no fruit. Hmm? Faith should be in a real uh, guru or qualified guru. Hmm? If the guru is not bona fide, not according to Shastra, Tasmat Gurum Prapadde Jigyasu Shreya Uttamam Shabde Parecha Nishanatam Brahman Nupasamasham. If he don't know all the things, what is in his scripture, then he is actually no guru. He should know all the logic, all the essence of the whole Shastra, Vedanta, Upanishad, Ved. Srimad Bhagavatam, Gita, Raman, Puran and all. Otherwise he cannot remove her doubts. So he should be qualified in this. And he should be disattached from worldly this uh, enjoyment. enjoyment. Never he will be charmed with any and he will have no worldly desire. But these are two outward Symptoms. 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 First, mm, intrinsic nature will be there. He will be realized of Krishna. Hmm? He will be very qualified in bhakti, always chanting, remembering. He will be expert how Radha and Krishna Chubal can meet. Nikunja you know, Ratike Elishindhyayi. Yajalirbhi yukti apekshan tatrati dakshadati allavasya bande So all the qualities, virtues in Gurbhashta should be in Gurudev. And if not, especially that saksha tharitena samastha shastri ruktastatha bhavreta eva sadhvi kintu prabho yukriya eva tasya Bande hmm? He is the manifestation of Baladeva Prabhu and Nityananda Akhanda Guru Tattva. Hmm? He will be expert in all these things. Some realization for this, pure bhakti, love and affection. Then he is Guru. Hmm? Otherwise he will fall, da fall down. And we are seeing in these worlds, all so many lakhs and lakhs of gurus are falling down. So, Guru Nishta is backbone of our bhajan. But that Guru Nishta should be in the real Guru, hmm? not in these worldly Gurus. Daily ten times, twenty times falling down, falling down, falling down. Hmm? So, we should have. If, if you have no Guru, you should pray to Krishna. He will arrange everything. You cannot go to Guru Dev. You cannot examine your Guru. 
your past activities and impressions, they can help you. And the pure devotees can help you. So Gurudev Maharaj always has a very high class of Guru Nishtha. Sometimes he could not utter the name of Srila Prabhupada Prabhupada. Then he used to tell us, point out that all you should be speaking. Shocked. In Ashta Shakti because you used to I personally seen so many times. So, uh, there are so many things to know about him. Especially, you can see in my dad book. I was always serving him. Uh, from beginning, our elder guru brother, Pujapad Bhaman Maharaj, he joined our Guru Dev early in, at the time of Srila Prabhupada. 1930. 1930. And from 1930 he is serving our Guru Dev. 69 eh? years. 69. From 69. Eh? 69 years. Yes. Continue. We came afterwards. And after when we joined Maisha, Tribhikam Maharaja and Maisha. And then Gaudiya Patrika. He established Gaudiya Patrika, Bhagavad Patrika. And he began a Brihad Mridanga. You know Brihad Mridanga? Printing press. Printing press. And by this, also many periodical, monthly, and Hindi, Bengali, Bengali books were published. 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 And he kept sannyas, Bhakti Vedanta, this Upadhi, to all. First three we were. Pujapad Man Maharaj, Tripikar Maharaj and myself. Pujapad Narsingh Maharaj, one of the uh, disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta <coughs> always serving my Guru Guru, like Siksha Guru. He gave a proposal that your Guru Dev wants to give renounce order to you three. Oh, we three rejected that proposal that we are not so qualified. We see that how qualified Nani Maharaj, how qualified Vaikhanas Maharaj, Sauti Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, Siddhar Maharaj, all hmm, high class of learned persons. And they can speak so highly in all languages. Hmm. Thousands and thousands of persons can be charmed by that. Oh, we are, we, we are not so qualified. Then, he went to Gurudev and he told that, oh, they are not. <laughs> they don't come. <laughs> but, but again he came and he told that, you should think that uh, you are servant of your Gurudev. You should try to serve him. And he especially told to me that your Gurudev wants that you should be uh, given Shanya. Then I told that if he wants that I should be naked and dancing, I can act like this. I am a puppet of his hand. If he wants that I should be take renounce order. Whether I am not qualified or qualified, I will accept his order. Then he quickly went to Gurudev. And he told that Narayan, Gaur Narayan is ready. Hmm? Then he told that tomorrow I will give renounce order to him. And then he went again to both. He told that Narayan Maharaj, Narayan, Gaur Narayan is ready and Gurudev is giving. So you should decide whether you will take or not. You can consider, you can think. Then they told that, oh, if Gaur Narayan is taking. And uh, his logic is so okay. So we are no, we know that we are not qualified, but we want to be a puppet of our Guru Dev. And then quickly we three on the Gaur Purnima, the birthday of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
वैरकी भरी सुंदर अंगे का नीम भक्ति वेदांत बामन भक्ति वेदांत रेकनन भक्ति वेदांत In 54, I was in Mathura. After that, Swami Maharaj was given sannyas. Same Bhakti Vedanta. In sannyas is junior to me. What year? Huh? What year was it? 59. 59, perhaps. In Mathura, I was in Mathura. Yeah. Nursing Maharaj used to live with me. In Mathura. I always used to serve him. And he has so much faith on me. So uh, I also told Swamiji that you are so much qualified, and now you should take a renounced order, and you should preach everywhere in the world. Then he told me one story that when I was initiated by my Guru Dev Shri Bhakti Shri Bhang Saraswati Guru Swami Thakur, I began to. Chant name and reading Simad Bhagavatam. I saw a slope in Simad Bhagavatam. Just say, "Aham Gurnami, Harishe Tad Dharmshan." To whom? I am very specially merciful. Merciful to them, and he gives everything to me. Krishna is telling. I take very, very soon everything. What he desires. And what is so much favorable, um, prayer, 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 dear to him? I quickly take his whole wealth, reputation, name and fame, name, fame, family, everything. So I was fearing. I make him a street boy. So what should I do? But he never stopped chanting and remembering. He was telling to me, Swami Ji. In Mathura, before he take took sannyas, then after some time, I lost the service of Bengal chemical. After some time, he came to Allahabad, and he started his own medical factory in a big scale, but it was also failed. Then again he became uh, he wanted to start a medical shop. And it was very famous in the whole Allahabad. Our Indian Prime Minister first, Jawaharlal Nehru and his daughter, they used to come for shopping medicine, medicine. But it is also famous. Then he became a street beggar, and then he came to Mathura. <laughs> and at that time he told, and he told, oh, I was faring so much, and the same stays. <laughs> my ma- my wife and children have kicked me. <laughs> And so, like a straight figure. Then I told that possibly that you should take sannyas. And in meantime, Guru Dev came, and I told Guru Dev, and he also told Sorry. him that you should take sannyas. And he agreed, and sannyas was given on the Bishwarup Khau. Huh? Huh. And then he began to preach, and very quickly, in so many, little time, little time, time, he preached over whole world, you know, as a miracle. Wrote so many books. Hmm. Was very faithful to his guru day, and married my guru day. He has written so many things. For me, he he has written that our relation is transcendental. Hmm? Can never be broken. Cannot be broken. Hmm? And he told that in the last, you should give me samadhi. They should not touch my body. I have brought so many disciples, like monkeys. ignorant, like monkeys, but I could not nourish them, not train them, train them so much. So I am happy that you should help them after my. Give I told that you should not worry. I will try to help them, and that is why I am coming to help. 
and to carry order of my shiksha guru shri bhakti vedanta swami maharaj because he was very bosom friend to my gurudev and also to me in sanyas he was junior but in knowledge and all bhakti he was so much superior to me lakhs and lakhs times not one time <laughs> Huh? That is why I accepted him like my shiksha guru. Hmm? He has also told about my guru there. Hmm? Hmm. Bhairagya yoga bhakti rasam prayat apayan man anubhish manda kripam budhijya parad dukha dukhi si kesavam ashayam. This version is from uh, Ravnath Das Goswami. For Sanatan Goswami, and he applied on my Guru Dev. Why? How he respected my Guru? How? Like Sanatan Goswami, hmm? he used to respect. So I respect him. Well, I have come for this reason to carry his orders, not for money, not for disciple, not for him. Well, it will. You should all were should know. that this world has made up problems only problems you know how swami ji faced so many problems uh then all come come out famous in india and he was manager and everything but quickly problem came and he was to, he has to resign from that. who made it no Huh? Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu, Krishna maybe. Oh, I am not sent you to be engaged in this. Manager, manager. Only manager of this. Oh, you will be manager of that transcendental world. I want to make it. <laughs> Then he even tried, and he started his own medical. Huh? Then Krishna, oh, no. I want to take it. You have not come for this. Hmm. Being a medical representative, uh, medical factory manager or owner, mm-hmm. and quickly he took. He thought that oh, so big problem. How to do? No sleep, nothing. But Krishna has arranged everything from him. So you should be always don't fear from problems. League of devotees. Huh? He made the League of Devotees. <laughs> yes, League of Devotees, and he also collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> What he used to do? Even he went to America, and even in one year, it was so nothing. difficult. For nothing. Year, nothing. Yes. Man But he did not give up. Someone. <laughs> so he was telling all these things to me privately. It was so near and dear to me. He has so much strong faith in me. He knew that I can serve him, and that is why mercifully engaged me in his service. So from 1946, I am serving him. <laughs> But nowadays, unfortunate devotees, they don't want to recognize recognize this, and they are cutting their legs with axes and themselves. Hmm? One day, I pray him that one one day they should recognize this all these facts, and they should come in line. Otherwise, they are disturbing whole school. And now school is going to be drowned in sheep. They are doing all this nonsense things. I want they should come in line and they should follow Swami. And realize all these things. They should always like. They should. So all these philosophy and high class of regulated, not regulated bhakti, but spontaneous. Oh, all this love. Chetan Mahaprabhu has come for this. Our Guru Dev came for this. Bhakti Vinod Thakur or whole disciple Guru Parampara Parampara came for this. Swami Ji has come for this. But he has to cut jungle of Maya Bhat, Sahajya, Sakhi, Bheke, and all these things. He has written everything in his books. Everything is in book. But now they are not realizing. They are not reading. Only selling and making money. 
So I want that. Just to try to follow the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Rupa Goswami. I was going to tell so many things, very beautiful things, but time is over, night is coming. So I am leaving it for next two. And at that time you will be some more developed and then you can realize all these things. So I am telling that this world is made of problems. Don't be for oh, only one problem is there. That problem. How is it? So don't be fear. Don't be like us, very strong. We have left all these things so much highly position, so much highly wealth, very high class of wealth. And everything we have left in a moment, in a second. And you will have to give up if you are not going to give up. One day, surely you will have to give up all these things. So why problem? A problem comes and keep your feet on the heads of the problem and quickly short. This is the thing. But we should try to serve Krishna, devotees, and go on. Hmm? Problems come, and you should be calm and quiet and wait and go on chanting, remembering Krishna. Quickly it will be so. Hmm? Then you will be like Sukadeva Goswami. Wealth will call. Hmm? Everything will call. Oh, come on, come on. And then you will, oh, never, never. So the no, father, Das was calling, Oh, Putraha, Putraha, oh, Putraha. Oh, my son. Hmm? And he was not replying. But first was replying, Oh, who is son? Who is father? Hmm? And why you are doing father, father? Um, son, putra, son, putra, son, putra, son. son. So, we have come to help in this way. Transcendental thing we will help. And we will try to solve all these questions also. So don't be worry. Have patience by chanting name. All kinds of problems will be solved. Very good. And not solving, keep your feet on problems. Hey. No, don't be worried. Gaur Pramana. One thing I can tell Radha Chinta Niveshana Jasya Kantir Bilokita. Perhaps anyone has explained. We have explained. Here is the thing that we are Rupan Gubhasya. What is Rupan Gubhasya? There is a Raga Niva Vaishnava. Raga means, means a spontaneous love towards Krishna. But Rupanin are special. Among whole Raganuga, there is special. this special mood of Rupa Goswami. Who was Rupa Goswami? He was the Rupa Manjari of Srimati Radhika. If they are serving to Radha Krishna conjugal, but yet inclination where? Shimata. In the lotus feet of Radhika. If any prem kala is going on between Radha and Krishna themselves in playing, gambling or anything, if Krishna is defeated by Radhika, all she will clap and very happy. But if he, Srimati Radhika is defeated by Krishna, oh, my Sakhi, always being in the side of Radhika, always serving whole day, night with Radhika. In pleasure of Radhika, and in separation for well, the very things separation for Radhika. They cannot console, pacify, because she has equal love for Radha and Krishna. But they can uh, pacify. pacify Radhika. Why? Because they are also lamenting like 
how they can do it? Because they are of Radhika, always of Radhika. If Lalita is coming, oh, they will ask this Rup Mangari that can we go to conjugal? Without permission of Rup Mangari, he will not come. Though he is so high from then Rup, Rup Mangari, but they will have to take permission from his. So this is intrinsic nature of Rup Mangari. So, or Guru Maharaj wanted to explain all these things, Radha Chinta Nimeshena Jasakantir Bilokita. Our Radhika should not lament for Krishna. Krishna should lament and feel separation mood for Radhika. Then it is better. Why Radhika will be? She should be Swadhin Bhartrika. Sri Krishna should come and he should give his bansi float and his feather called peacock, peacock feather. In the lotus feet of Radhika and he should apologize from Radhika. Oh Radhika, I will not offense again. I am taking how. So Krishna should do He should always lament for Srimati Radhika. So this is the intrinsic nature of Rupanugavaisya. So my Guru Devas, a pure Rupanugavaisya. There are so many things to say. Today is now. And you should digest what they have told. Mm -hmm. And you should be qualified to digest all these things. And be prepared your ears and heart to hear all these things. Don't try to follow only out outward. Try to go very deep. And it will come. From any realized something realized, realization in Gurudev, in Vaishnava, then all day. So I am happy that you are coming and participated in my Vyas Puja of my Gurudev. Uh, one thing, at this day we have seen from my own eyes Guru Maharaj used to give proper respect to his all God brothers, whether he was junior or senior to all. And he used to worship, beginning from Prabhupada, Gautu Sodhaswaji, Bhakti Vinod Thakurin, all these athletes to Krishna. Pancha, Krishna, Krishna Panchakam, Vyas Panchakam, Acharya Pancha, Guru Parampara Pancha, Tarta Panchara, seven kinds of Panchakam, seven into five. Thirty-five. For, for each Guru, he is to have a one kalash. Kalash means? Teacher. Teacher. And calling them in that teacher, he is to worship. Om Krishnaya Nama, O Vasudevaya Nama, Radhumna, Radhaya, all. O Madhvacharya Nama, Ramanuja Charya Nama, O Nimbaditta Charya Nama, and uh, by all these things, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadatha, Shiva Sadi, Sri Gaur Bhakta Pinda, like Guru Tattva, uh, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti, um, Gaur Prasod Das Bhavaji Maharaj, Bhakti Banod Thakur, Pradhanata, uh, like this, all he used to respect all. Hmm? So if you are not respecting all these things, it means you cannot have. Coming through Guru Parampara Krishna. And if of this garland one is taken, what will be? All will scatter. So this is like a garland. A spontaneous coming from in a land. So if you are not respected, you are respecting only your Gurudev, not his all disciples, only his God brothers and his Guru Parampara, then what is means? You do that, you are nonsense. Nonsense and rascal in his world. He used to use this rascal word everywhere. <laughs> and also he is speaking. I have heard. Oh, rascal. <laughs> so they are like rascals, not understanding all these things. 
<laughs> so we should try to obey all. We should to give proper respect to all all senior and junior God brothers. If they are not God brothers, when we chanting the remainder, oh, do pranam by mind. Think that these are on in our God family. So we are all in family. Whether you are not initiated by my Guru Dev, but yet we are in a very big family of God Chandra. Whether he is in line of Mahaprabhu, Janva Thakurani, Bir Chandra, Narottam Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, no harm in Baldev Prabhu, in Shamananda Prabhu family, where we are, you should be there. We should respect all. Among them, who was Rupanuga Vaishnava, we should respect them. And if this, your heart is not like this, you cannot have Krishna. Even, even your all anarth will not go, offenses will not go. So we should try to be Gaur Praman Jai Gurudev. Diwala. Gurudev Daya Karke Mujhiko Ya Pena Lena
explain the purpose of this song hindi song you remember gurudev jay karo sai pa boye sir jay karo le bhalo to nijar dona kare ke upahar dite ami bujhte pachhi na sai ka boye sai kore diten ronthe ara jara dona na ke uni diten ha you sir so we heard this one you want that i should sign my name oh yes Yeah. So we heard this wonderful, nice prayer of which is very a sincere disciple towards his guru Dev, and actually all the words of this prayer carry in them the real siddhanta of our life of how one a sincere disciple prays and receives the mercy of his guru Dev. It's expression of his deep emotions for his guru Dev. So it says in the first line. How many copies? गुरुदेव दया करके मुझको अपना लेना ओ गुरुदेव यूर सो मर्सीफुल यूर ओशन ऑफ मर्सी सो प्लीज एक्सेप्ट मी एंड मेक मी द सर्वेंट ऑफ यूर फीट द सेम मोड इज एक्सप्रेस बशलभक्त ठाकुर इन गुरुदेव कृपा बिंदु दिया वेर इज सेस योग्यता बिचारे किचु ना ही पाई तुम्हारे करुणा साथ फॉर दिस लाइन इज सेस करो मोरे आत्मसात सो प्लीज एक्सेप्ट मी सो सेम मोड इज कन्वेड इन दिस लाइफ दट प्लीज एक्सेप्ट मी एंड मेक योर सर मेक मी योर सर्वेंट एंड दैट इज माई इटरनल पोजिशन टू बी योर सर्वेंट दया करके मुझको अपना लेना मेरी नाव भवर डोले उसे पार लगा देना दैट आई एम वॉन्डरिंग इन दिस ओशन ऑफ मटीरियल सफरिंग एंड वॉट इज द बोट आई एम कैरिंग this boat of this body this body is referred as boat and in this material ocean it is suffering always is swaying on every side and is not sure when it will sink in the water in this ocean so sometimes we see in the ocean in the ocean there is a uh, uh, whirlpool yeah in the whirlpool and it is so dangerous that even any ship come in that whirlpool then it cannot be safe it is so strong and it's completely heading for ends so similarly it says my position in this material world is like a ship in the whirlpool so please save me you can take me out otherwise nobody has the power to take me out of that and then he says karuna niti naam tera karuna barsao tum soye hue bhago ko he nath jagao to O ocean of mercy, O Shila Guru Dev, because your name is Karuna Nidhi. What is Karuna Nidhi? Treasure house of mercy. He has no partiality for anyone. His mercy is impartial and equal to all. Yet those who are completely surrendered, completely surrendered themselves, and they have given this surrender unconditionally, without any bond. to them of course they will definitely realize the mercy of gurudev in a much more deeper sense than others yet shri gurudev is equal to all he is not partial to anyone so he says your name is the treasure house of mercy so give me that mercy and with this mercy what will happen my fate my fortune what is my real fortune my real fortune is that i am servant of krishna 
and I am always engaged in my eternal service to Krishna in those uh, relishing those wonderful pastimes and exchanges. But right now, I am completely deprived of this fortune. Or in a sense, as expressed in this sentence, as in this prayer, that my fortune is slipping. It is, it's in the latent position. So, please wake it up. Wake me up. And let me have access to this wonderful uh, uh, fortune, which is actually mine, I, which I actually possess, but because of my engrossed entanglement in this material world, I am not able to access it. But Gurudev is the one, Shil Gurudev, Sad Gurudev is the one person who can, who has the power to wake up, to clear this, nobody else can do. As we heard in our earlier discourses also, that only by the mercy of Gurudev one can realize these things. And then he says, Tum Sukh ke Sagar ho, Bhakti ke Sahare ho. And as Shri Gurudev mentioned that when he began his uh, uh, discourse, he was saying that the backbone of our bhajan is what? Guru Nishtha. So same thing is said, Tum Sukh ke Sahare ho, Bhakti ke Sahare ho.